The roots of slavery run deep in American history. Over time, the practice of the transatlantic slave trade morphed into the prison labor system that we see today in New York State. Sometimes we think about slavery as a legal system where white people owned black people and don't really think about that it's a legal system that really was broader than that, right? And one of the things that it really facilitated was complete economic control of the labor power of black people by the white people who owned them directly, by slave traders who made their living off of trading enslaved people, by business people who through financial systems were adjacent to the system. It's really a system where you take the labor power of black people and you redistribute that wealth to white hands. And the second part of that story is about changes in the prison system, largely in the North which at the time was dominated by the Pennsylvania system, which focused a lot on solitary confinement as the primary sort of activity of, of folks when they're incarcerated. And then New York introduces the Auburn system, um, which focuses actually on hard labor. So the idea of prison labor is introduced by the state of New York through this new system. Um, and in the beginning, it's about uh, prison con contracting that labor out. So people are working for industrialists and other private companies. And so this idea that to be incarcerated means to do hard labor day in and day out is really an idea that was born in New York State. The 13th Amendment ended chattel slavery, but with an insidious exception. Throughout the U.S., including here in New York, people can still be subject to slavery as punishment for a crime. This loophole has allowed New York to build a prison system so dependent on human exploitation and degradation that it is in the most simple terms, modern day slavery. Docs um, mandate you to work uh, or go to school. Like it's mandate, you can't just be idle. Um, and if you don't work or go to school, you're disciplined, you're punished. They pay you from the interest of the inmates fund, meaning that based on the accumulation of all the money they get, from all the donations from families, this is where the pay scale come from. So the pay scale is, is very, very low. You might get at most a dollar a day and you're doing all kind of labor from cleaning up the prison to fixing the plumbing, to painting the jail, to, to working in the mess hall, to everything in the prison is being done by prison labor from incarcerated individuals. Um, and they exploit that. Every license plate you see when every car in New York State was made in some prison system. Um, and at the end of the day, when you leave prison, you can't get a pension or you can't get a job in DMV. They don't know you anymore. Um, and I mean, it's just mandatory slave labor. Like you have to work and you're working for pennies. You can't even afford to send your child um, a pair of sneakers. I was working in a mess hall and we were only getting paid like 16 cents. So I had to start like 5.30, so I had to get up to shower at 4.30 in the morning. I had to um, prepare trays. Um, when it was COVID, we had over about 400 something trays and we were working from six in the morning to six at night. No days off for like a week. Um, if you don't do your job, you'll get written up. You'll get a ticket. You'll be locked in your cell. You can be locked in your cell for seven days, up to 30. You're getting paid cents. You have people in these prisons where they don't have loved ones. They don't have support. So what is 16 cents? If you are going to have these incarcerated individuals working, at least give them something to work for. If, for instance, they don't have support, like I said in the beginning, at least they'll have something to look forward to when they go to work, because then they know that, okay, I'm going to make this certain amount this week. Next week come commissary, I can go get me some commissary. What are you getting with 16 cents? New York's prison industries are a big business. Between 2010 and 2021, the New York prison industry sold over $545 million worth of goods and services via Corecraft. Meanwhile, one out of three families supporting an incarcerated loved one have gone into crippling debt. It's, it's by design. That's how I know that it's slavery, like it's, it is slavery. And then there's, a, there's an element that's, you know, like you go to a program committee and they assign you a, a program and industry might be it. And if you refuse, 
you go to the box, you get a tier three, you can lose good time. So yeah, it is forced, you know. Unfortunately, even though we fought for that way many years ago, we are still not given adequate amount of supply, sanitary supplies for women during their cycles. Everyone's different. No one has the same cycle. And so that's not accounted for. So if I have to spend money to get some sanitaries, hopefully it is on the commissary list, right? Because sometimes it's not. Then I have to choose, okay, well, I can get this. And more than likely, that's about three, four dollars. So that's over half of what my two week pay is. And so now what do I have left to eat, to do? What do I, what can, what can I get with this? Most of the times, you know what we do, we've done and still do. We get some honey buns because they're 75 cents, right? So we get a few of those and we'll get some sodas or maybe the Kool-Aid packets and hope that that lasts us for the next two weeks until we go. Imagine that, I don't care what it is. 10 cents an hour, 12 cents an hour, 25 cents an hour. If it was 35 cents an hour, do the math on that. Six hours a day for five days a week. I remember um, one one morning, well, one night, one morning, it was like two, three o'clock in the morning um, that I was awakened. Uh, my cell door opened. First of all, you got to get permission to even open the cell door at that time because every cell door should be locked to go on a a scheduling thing and the watch commander has to know. So obviously the watch commander, whoever else in the executive offices knew that they were kicking certain people to go do, you know, shovel the snow. That's what my door was open for. And that wasn't my job. I had nothing to do with the yard crew or the grounds or maintenance or anything like that. But my door was open and was told that I had to get up, get dressed, put some clothes on because I had to go down and shovel snow off the walkways. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> because I was, I didn't understand it. He woke me out of sleep, I was scared, I jumped and you know, and it, it just, it was, I was confused. I didn't understand what was going on. And, and I said to, to the officer, I was like, but the, I don't work here, I don't work yards and grounds, that's not what I do. I don't care, get the <laughs> cursing and get the F up. If you don't, you're gonna get locked, your good time is gonna, you know. They were forced to do it because they were under the threat of taking their time away from them, their visits away from them, because that was said to me too. We'll take your visits, we'll take your phone calls, we'll take your everything. The only thing that was mandatory by the courts and the legislature was that we all got an hour's rec time period. You didn't have to have anything. Not a shower. My showers were threatened to take away. I mean, it was like you were threatened to take everything. The little, little bit of, of, of so-called um, autonomy or freedom or whatever choices that we might have had, you threatened to take all those away because they're all privileges because we're convicted of something, you know, and that in itself is wrong. You need to get up at three o'clock in the morning to go shovel snow. And then at that time, for those hours, you didn't get paid not even the 10 cent that they were offering. You were actually doing it for free. Yeah, I've seen a lot of um, consequences for that. I actually seen them being physically abused because they stood up because they verbally spoke and said, this is not my job detail. And why are you waking me up in the middle of the night? If they tell you to turn around and put you in cuff immediately, and then they want to take you off in shoe, and not just take you off in the shoe. They'll take you just like the way you're dressed in your pajamas. It be freezing cold. They don't care. You know the trauma that I felt behind, not just an officer, but the demand. You know the aggressiveness that came with it. Like I must get up. If I didn't get up, I was gonna be throwing in lock. I was gonna be throwing in shoe, and. I did it because I didn't want to go to shoe. And I felt humiliated. I just felt like I had no choice but to do what they was telling me to do because I would have been, I'd been suffering with other consequences. I was supposed to make the decision to balance out the money, to budget it and say, all right, I get soap this week. And then two weeks later, I'll get uh, my soup, you know, stack up on soup. And then the following week, uh, I'll get my toothpaste. It's, 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 it was all about budgeting, just to maintain.
abolish slavery without exceptions. That is Alabama, Colorado, Nebraska, Utah, Vermont. Passage of the No Slavery in New York Act and the Fairness and Opportunity for Incarcerated Workers Act would bring meaningful real-world change to New York's prison labor conditions. Passage of these bills would mean that people incarcerated in New York could no longer be forced to work and could not be punished or threatened with punishment for refusing to work. Those who choose to work while incarcerated would be provided basic health and labor protections, a fair wage, and the right to unionize, as well as meaningful employment opportunities that set them up to succeed in the workforce after returning to their communities. To learn more about 13th Forward and take action, visit www.13thforward.com. Call your legislators today and demand their support for ending slavery in New York.